March 22, 1887, The Daily Argus News, Crawfordsville, Indiana. The Use of Slang a partial list of the expressions in common use, words which are misapplied right and left, language of the rapid young man, slang used by the theatrical profession. Slang may not be elegant, but it is wonderfully expressive. The Gotham Bells have discovered this and do not fail to air their knowledge. To hear a charming creature resembling an angel or perhaps a cherub in Worth's latest creation, a perfect symphony in clouds of fleecy tulle, Tell her fond admirer to ice his lips and take his tongue for a sleigh ride produces such a chill that pneumonia is imminent. A lady's luncheon is pronounced to be a hen party and a dinner is said to be a feed. The latest thing in ball dresses is declared a daisy and the bonnet that is to bring out envy, hatred, malice, and all uncharitableness is spoken of as toothsome. The object of one's young affections greets you on the avenue with, Ah, there, while knowledge of the Old Testament is shown by the exclamation, Oh, Moses! The latest novel which meets with approbation is termed a corker, and a Venz or Adonis, whose hair would have made Titian wild, is universally spoken of as bricktop. Sweet is not applied alone to candy, but young men who supply that dainty come under the category, and, indeed, everything with a name has had that adjective attached to it at some time or another. The word little is misapplied right and left and is used to denote affection, as is also old. A maiden of sweet sixteen is told she is a dear old thing, and a Hercules who tips the scale at 250 is termed a little duck, so much for affection. The rapid young man, a youth arrayed in his Sunday best, is told he is a howler and when he is on the box seat showing how to handle a team, he is misinformed he can handle the ribbons. The exertion of doing this is great, as his team pulls him, throws dust at his competitors, and he must pull up and have a ball. On his way home, he passes the family carriage and irreverently remarks that he'd bet his hat if that's not the governor driving in the family hearse, and his lately deceased uncle is spoken of as a debtor, his place of business is termed a shop, and when he is inclined to have some supper, he declares that he must go and do a Welsh rarebit. He speaks of Delmonico's ballroom as the auction market, and chaperones as old girls. Champagne, he calls the boy, and always offers his friends a weed. When a visit is made to Bar Harbor, the great ball at Roddox is called the fish pond. The Anglomaniac always prefaces his or her remarks by I say, as if that were a necessary trademark. A man is being worked when anything is being got from him, and a queer member of a family is always spoken of as a regular case. The black sheep of a family is known as a bad egg, while anything that has been expected and does not come off is known as a sell. A man much in love is always spoken of as spoony, and when this is reciprocated, the pair are known as spoons. The simple-minded man is known to the slang world as a cake, and the same one, when he is supposed to be much in love with a fair being, is said to have got it bad. Of a young woman who has an eye for the main chance, it is said that her head's level, however high that very necessary appendage may be carried, and the men who gaze fondly at her are said to be mashed. The slang of the theatrical profession is extensive, but it is decidedly confined to the lower members of it. The better class of actors are studiously careful not to employ it, and they look with a certain degree of contempt upon those who are accustomed in their daily conversation to deal largely in slang. The days have gone when to see the ghost walk meant that salaries would be paid, a singular innovation in the old times. Union Square is now the headquarters of the slang actor the high-toned ones have long ago left that conspicuous resort. Here, you will hear constant references to Jonas, the unfortunates who are supposed to bring bad luck to the companies they happen to have been employed with. Fakers, actors of not much talent, and fake, a trashy and unworthy production of a piece. Gams is a reference to the limbs of an actress, and Dicer to the tall hat of the society actor. Perhaps no word is more habitually used than snap, which describes a company 
or a combination of which the funds are so low that it is not expected to last. There are SNAP managers and SNAP agents and SNAP troops that live from hand to mouth, year in and year out. It was Johnny Thompson, the on-hand man, who got stuck one time out west with his company, and somebody suggested that he should pledge his diamonds to get the people back. What, he exclaimed in disgust, hock me sparks for them plums, no siree. Mr. Thompson was the foremost professor of slang upon the stage. Jay describes the country audience, Chase yourself is the advice of the god to the one who is making a fool of himself. Sitting on ice applies to an audience that won't applaud. Touching that little question means the actor wants an advance on his salary. New York Journal. January 5, 1911. The Ellensburg capital, Ellensburg, Washington. The Parisian cabman, a deadly verbal insult, that will render him speechless. A discreet knowledge of slang is a very useful accomplishment for the stranger or the foreign resident in Paris. Thus, if a cabman is rude or more than usually extortionate, or if he splashes you with mud from head to foot as he passes and then turns around to grin at the damage done, and cochers frequently do these things, an inadequate command of the niceties of the French language leaves all the advantages on his side you might call him idiot or sauvage, but this would only tickle him. If, however, you are able to shout, Va donno Collignon, the result of the encounter would be at once wholly in your favor. To say Collignon to a cocher is the supreme insult. It leaves him gasping and further speech on his side useless. It is easy to understand why. Collignon was a coachman who, as long ago as 1855, went to the house of a poor professor and murdered him because he had protested against an overcharge. It is satisfactory to know that Collignon was promptly tried, sentenced to death, and guillotined. To this day, then, Va Collignon remains the last word. Paris Correspondent, New York Sun. July 20, 1922. The Spokesman Review, Spokane, Washington. Slaying of today talk tomorrow. Bees' knees and cat's pajamas already giving way to latest flapperies. Old words, new ideas. Keen party may be okay with some. Others, wet or not so hot, they say. Every generation has its language, and it is an axiom that the slang of one generation is the common speech of the next. It is well within the memory of people not so old today when stunt was absolutely new in the vocabulary of the young and a gob of anything was also a novelty. Ginger was the substitute of pep and slick, which is being used too promiscuously, is but a revival. Chimmy Fadden of the late 90s was the Bible of the slang lovers and George Aid's fables also presented many new thoughts for the earnest seekers after phrases. Last year, the bee's knees and the cat's pajamas came in for the attention of the young, and this year brings its crop of foolish words. Not so keen, or a keen party is another revival. Twenty years ago, if you were keen over anyone, you had fallen for them, or farther back even, you were struck by them. The jazz hounds of this generation love to use the long and ugly adjectives like revolting, nauseating, disgusting, Vile is a favorite word also, and Purit has its admirers. Flopper is he for flapper, and pipsqueak, as a term for a young male of certain qualities, is also used. The finale hopper is a term for flapper, and comes from the type who are favored at proms. If a person, or a party, is not so hot, it means that really, you know, they are not too potent, and in fact, somehow, sadly lacking. Wet is a term to describe anything anybody at college does not like. Spooning has for its descendants fussing and petting. Its great-great-grandchild is flower-potting. But to be sadly out of it is to have your speech, or your bobbed hair, or your clothes, vieux jeu, which means an old game or old jewels in the idiom. Anyway, 
If you are vieux jeu, you are out of date entirely, and nobody, however revolting or vile, wants to be that. It is simply disgusting to consider. At college, a weir is what used to be called a grind, and he is a misguided person who thinks schools are for study only, and consequently, he does not find favor in higher educational circles. It is interesting, the new vocabulary, or, rather, the good old dictionary gone wrong, and a parent, to be really keen, should be an etymologist if he doesn't want to be not so hot.